Hello and welcome to the Capital Games Movie Club. I am the Wiz. And I'm Zero. Zero, as it has been ordained from last week, we decided to watch some romance films. So this week, you decided that the first romance film we should watch was 2018's uh, blockbuster hit, uh, Crazy Rich Asians, starring Constance Wu, Henry Golding, and... Uh, Michelle Yeoh, directed by John M. Chu. Um, yeah, I, I guess before we get into it, I, I, it's it's uh, this was a very popular film when it came out, and it, it was for its representation, really. But it actually made a, a, a lot of money, so I just want to post that uh, just because that's the reason probably why we chose this because I know you have family that raved about this movie i've heard people who are i would say quote unquote normies who love this movie so i thought maybe you, th you thought right to give this a shot so uh why don't we start with you what did you think of crazy rich asians it was a fun movie but um as i've mentioned in private conversations with you all week man this movie brought up some very uncomfortable memories for oh, me you want to get into that <laughs> do, do you? uh yeah, yeah. So okay, okay. We're, we're gonna get some deep personal vibes from Zero here. Um, yeah, you told me some interesting uh, feelings that you had from it. Um, just get get down to it. Uh, what what uh, what memories were dredged up in your head when watching this? Um, really, the whole the whole piece about having status and your status meaning something uh, with potential. Uh, potential repercussions uh, with regards to marriage and stuff like that that one hurt a little bit because at one point in my life um i was uh dating um uh my now ex-girlfriend at the time but uh she was cantonese chinese and um while her family wasn't really crazy well off she uh she and her family were or were pretty pretty well to do and had a lot of um, a lot of connections in the uh, Cantonese Chinese community, mm -hmm. and of course me, I'm just a working class Asian dude. So I'm just I had no status to myself. Um, uh, if you were to kind of put it to a caste like comparison, I would be essentially a lowborn man. So lowborn man dating a um, gal who's from a um, a pretty well-to-do family and of course i was always constantly being coached by my ex-girlfriend saying hey um you're um you're in the medical profession but you need to keep bigging yourself up you need to you know just show my friends uh my family and my family friends that uh, you're that you're going places it's going to take you time but you are constantly slaving your ass to to better yourself to raise your um, your station in life and all this other stuff and seeing that theme being oh so constant in this movie I was just like wow holy cow this this is one set of scars I never thought I'd be opening up again <laughs> I mean, okay I can understand where you would have that have that feeling and it would remind you of your past but the movie I, I didn't really feel went that route I think it more was along the routes of here is this commoner who's in, infiltrating our bubble uh, and for possibly nefarious reasons. So we should shun her is I thought, I thought what I, what I got out of it, really, I didn't really think it was a, uh, the, uh, well, you know, not you mention it. I, I guess I, I could definitely see where you're coming from actually, because there are, we won't get into spoilers, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it was more about, Basically, this person who this person just got involved uh, serendipitously in this whole rich culture and rich we mean money culture uh, involving the uh, involving this family. I didn't think it was a a matter of this person has to Im keep improving their station to measure up uh, that, but that was kind of a theme in the movie. So I guess, I guess, yeah, you're right on that. I, I, I'll walk that back, but yeah. Um, so there was that. And then of course, um, there was the other angle that, that I was reminded of too, 
which you just mentioned, which was um, a lot of the uh, concerns by some of the uh, really well-off members in the movie, uh, um, from the rich family members on Nick's side just being just super, super concerned that, you know, just this, uh, this nobody, Rachel, was somehow infiltrating their, their sort of um, wealthy people culture. Uh, that was also something I did experience as well um, with uh, with my ex's family. It was just like, like, dude, he's a man. Why? Uh, um, there, if he's if he's interested in in her, just it's probably because he's he's trying to boost his uh, boost his stature in life and and try to come off like he's a made man and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that was something that I dealt with as well too. So I was like, oh my god, this is one hell of a can of worms to open <laughs> so you had you had a, a distinct difference than most people had in this movie where you despite this being a very happy very like very one-dimensional movie you you definitely got a deeper thing out of it just because of like a past experience oh yeah yeah <laughs> oh, yeah I can, I can see that like that 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 does happen from time to time and and that's that's the that's really the point of art really in a sense where you can some people might look at something and goes eh, it's nothing and others might get something deep out of it and the art maybe wasn't in, it wasn't intentional but it happens so that's that's cool i mean well maybe not in your situation but you know uh yeah that's interesting okay um why don't we get down to uh, do you have more to add or uh, no, that, that's really just all I had for the personal end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the, the most I had uh, in reference to this was, I, I guess since we're opening up here, I dated a person who was very looks conscious, very about dressing to the nines, looking her best at all times. And I mean, at all times, like to a point where... If it was just, hey, why don't we hang out and watch a movie at my house? It would take her three hours to get makeup on and get ready. It, it, it was ridiculous. But that, that's the most I got. Like, it, it wasn't a, I had to live up to something in order to be with a person. It was more or less, yeah, you're, you're really trying hard at this, and I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts, so how, how is this? Huh? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the most I got, so... And that doesn't even compare to the movie. Um, okay, so you said it was a fun movie. Um, what do you what do you think about it was fun? Because I'm really curious as to because uh, for those maybe who are listening to this for the first time, Zero here is more of a film a novice. Know, film novice, maybe. I mean, can I? Is that fair? Or do you want to get a better term for that? Yeah, it's really hard to say because um, I quite like Asian cinema. Right. I'm not really super invested in Western cinema, so okay. I'm kind of in this weird quagmire. <laughs> no, no, no. So you you definitely like film, but you like different. You like a specific subset of films, which fine. Like in Asian cinema, is there some great movies in Asian cinema? So that's you know that's neither here nor there. I I was curious because one you mentioned to me you're not a fan of of drama of, of romances really and two like the main reason you chose this was well fuck everybody i know is talking about the stupid film i might as well see it <laughs> which i've been yeah. there. i've been there before so um it sounds like you liked it what did you like about it um really it was just um the theming was very interesting especially since um the the particular uh, type of Chinese that they focused on was uh, Singaporean Chinese, mm-hmm. which uh, they're kind of a mishmash of uh, mainland uh, Chinese folks, uh, Cantonese folks, Hakka uh, Chinese folks. So just all sorts of different um, Chinese sub ethnicities. And that was interesting to me because um, there was just kind of a crazy smattering of languages because you would have some dialogue that was spoken in mandarin which my mandarin understanding is okay then there's cantonese which my cantonese is pretty good and so it was kind of like it was kind of interesting because i didn't even have to focus on like the scenes where the cantonese was spoken and and they had like subtitles just kind of superimposed on the movie and everything mm. and then 
uh, then the moments that they had Hakka, uh, I, which I've heard um, the Hakka dialect spoken, but I definitely cannot understand it. So, so I was just like, whoa, holy shit. Just, they've got just a whole bunch of uh, subsets of uh, Chinese uh, sub ethnicities in here. This hmm. is really intense. So that was interesting. Uh, some of the scenes that that took place in some of the just absolutely crazy, unrealistic premises, uh, which I mean, this movie is just all about just taking taking the drama of just rich Asian relationships to like eleven. Uh, like the bachelor party for Nick's friend being held on like a bunch of barges in international waters. Yeah. I was just like, okay, that's, that's insane. Yeah. I know it's clearly, it's clearly just taking this whole, this whole thing to an excess, but my God, that is, that is a crazy party. And to have it in international waters, that's insane. Yeah. And um, then of course, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Um, then you have our Amintha's party, which was like, oh yeah, um, we're just gonna, you know, just, jet off to some island and just have this like like insane shopping spree and massage thing on this on this just random ass tropical island i was just like holy shit that's insane too but i get it you guys are still playing into the excesses so you know i get it but my god that's insane stuff but yeah you know uh, it, it just i guess that's the other thing that i thought was kind of fun just how they would take the excesses into extremes that you could clearly tell it was parody. You know, I don't think it was parody, really. I think what they were doing in this movie was the, I would say, is the typical popular, like, Hollywood movie, Hollywood romance movie. Like, everything, like, the characters are one-dimensional. Um, everything is excessive. Everything is beautiful-looking, very striking. Um, first thing I thought about was My Best Friend's Wedding, uh, when I saw it, and then I kept thinking, like, no, this really has a classic Hollywood feel to it, because even though the characters are still one-dimensional, th they're relying on the the charm of of these of these of the actors to carry the movie, and it, it and thankfully the actors were really were, were good enough to actually get it through. Um, let me see, like. When I, when I mean like with uh, classic Hollywood, like like class, I'm like classic Hollywood. Like I said, like it's one dimensional. The characters, there, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of dimension or depth to them, but it's just a, a fun, good time. Every all the characters are broad. They they have like one or two things that you can identify them with, and of course, there's the classic stereotype of um, when. And this happens a this happens a lot in movies. Uh, it's happened from the fifties on. Uh, the the female character is you know is is a, is attractive is cute, but she's not sexy. She's not like gorgeous, threateningly gorgeous. So so women can identify with her in a certain sense. And the the man, of course, is impossibly handsome. And he's masculine, but he's nice, and he's non-threatening, so the women will like him, and the guys will like to be him. It's classic stereo. I, I, I hate to say stereotypical, but it's true. It, it's classic Hollywood-driven uh, uh, romance fair in this, uh, which is which really made it odd to me as to how this got so popular. But then again, the movie is fucking gorgeous to watch. I mean. Just watching like the the set pieces and um, I don't know if you did you watch it on HBO Max? Yes, I did. Okay, so did you watch the vignette before the movie? No, did not. Okay, so there is a vignette uh, in the beginning of the movie before it starts, uh, hosted by Alicia Malone. Uh, she's from TCM, and basically they highlighted the fashion of the movie, and I'm kind of glad I. Because I I'm terrible with fashion, um, so it means zero to me. But I was glad I watched it beforehand because then I got to really notice like the intricate designs, the the nice clothing, and everything that all these characters were you that were wearing. So I I definitely appreciated that to a sense as well. In that, like it, you, and that's what 
when you have one dimensional characters is what you have to do in order to make them more living and breathing is to give the surroundings and sometimes their clothing or maybe other characters to define their personality in more depth. And that movie and this movie does that pretty well, I, I think at least. But yeah, like I I I get some of the criticism people have because there are some that hated this film and were like, this is this is just standard Hollywood trash. Like, but it's fun. It's, it's a fun movie and it's charming. So I I can't say it's trash, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's like a classic of cinema. It's fun. It's it's just a fun movie to watch, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, and you put it best. It's it's grand cinema. It's not uh-huh. classic cinema, but it's grand because I mean it. It's kind of large and just fun to boot. So uh, that's really a kind of how I felt about it. I was like, all right, you know, just this was a fun movie, um, probably a grand movie in the in the overall scheme of things. But yeah, just um, anyone who's overstating it that it's going to be a future classic. I would say that's probably pushing it. Um, you know, I think in with popular, like in, in a popularity sense, it will be a classic. Like, like say, God, um, like like movies like Runaway Bride, like The Notebook, movies that are really okay, but because they're made, they look pretty and they're made well and they have charismatic actors like you a lot of people look past that the story is threadbare and and done repeatedly like it's a comfort movie really like it i can i can definitely see young kids watching this movie like as their teenage like especially young girls watching this as a teenager and just adoring it and watching it constantly and then possibly coming back 10 years later, watching it, and it's a nostalgic uh, movie for them, and watching... It, it's, it's that, really. It's, it's a, like I said, it's a comfort movie, really. It's, it's, not, it's not, like I said, it's not deep. It's not doing anything really uh, groundbreaking. But it's, a, it's comfortable. It's a, it's, it's a fun movie that I guess you can turn your brain off to and enjoy, but it, it's... But that's what it is, really. It's it's a comfort movie. So, and usually comfort movies are the most profitable and the ones that get the most play. So, I think for people like me, no, it's not going to be a classic anywhere near close to it. But I think for, I would say, quote unquote, normies who see maybe three or four movies a year and have specific tastes, I could see them really enjoying this. So, yeah. Um, performances. I mean, this is a charming cast. I, I, I've got to admit, like, I've seen movies where, um, basically there's only one or two good actors and the rest are on minimally and for good reason, but I can't really pick an actor in this movie where I said they were annoying. Like, even the, even the character that's supposed to be annoying, which is, I think, the uh, Aquafina played, was actually kind of likable. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I actually enjoyed her in this. Like, I distinctly got Joan Rivers vibes from her, like, specifically. And I was like, like, normally I'd be annoyed as shit by her, but she was, she pulled it off really well. I thought she was funny in this. Henry Golding was okay. Although finding out this was his first movie, it made sense to me then. I mean, he, he didn't have much to work with, but then if this is his first movie, you don't want something that deep. You just want him to be handsome and likable. And yeah, that's what he was. Okay. Yeah. Gemma Chan was um, was lovely as always, but um, it uh, uh, the fate that her character suffers um, uh, in the movie is pretty sad, and I'll get into it in yeah, the so, spoiler zone part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think an interesting thing about the movie that uh, maybe maybe people have pointed out, maybe not, that this is kind of a women's empowerment movie in a sense. I mean, okay, I'm looking at this as a straight guy, so I'm not, I might be wrong on this, but these are about women who stand their ground and basically do what they think is best for them, 
even the the quote unquote evil mother in the in the movie is a powerful uh, matriarch who deserves respect in this. Like it, it is clear that the guys are either one dimensional and just made to be handsome and look good and be nice or to be complete doofuses and assholes and stereotypical assholes in this movie. So yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I like Gemma Chan in this. Um, although she didn't have much to bite into either. She was, she was not in the film much, but yeah, I, I liked her. I, I think, I think this, the, the main performances are Michelle Yeoh and uh, Constance Wu. I mean, Constance Wu plays the, the, the main character. So like I said before, cute, bubbly, but smart and driven and likable, but not threatening. I mean, it, it's it's the classic stereotype of the lead actress uh, in, in a romance movie. Because they, 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 it's been shown in a lot of romance movies that audiences, if a woman is too attractive, they don't like to get behind her. Or if she's too sexy or too visually appealing, they kind of, you know. And I'm not, and don't take this as me saying she's unattractive. She's very attractive. But they definitely play off, they play down her attractiveness in this movie. And, and, except for key scenes where she's wearing really nice clothing. So, again, another romantic staple that they have in these movies. Uh, Michelle Yeoh's uh, performance um, as the tiger mom, yeah, God, fucking nailed it, because, yeah, just, just absolutely ruthless and brutal, because just um, her primary objective is to essentially protect her family. Yeah. So for me, it was just kind of one of those things. It was like, yeah, totally understand it. You know, just, just totally understand that she is driven and, and the objective for her is I need to make sure that, that Nick is marrying the right girl. She, uh, she can't be one that's got like all sorts of weird stuff that could um, reduce her status and everything. So it was, it was something I was just like, yep, totally get it. Yeah. Totally but, understand. But like, if you followed Michelle Yeoh, I don't know you have, this is not a surprise. Like, it, it, for her to have this kind of a performance, to, and I would think, really, in a supporting role, carries the film to a certain extent, this is not a surprise. She's actually a fantastic actress, and she's actually getting her due now in uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which I, I, I think we will see at some point. I'll, I'll force you to, if I have to. <laughs> but we'll... But uh, yeah, like she's she's always been a very good actress. She got typecasted as a martial artist because of how athletic and how good she was in that role. Um, but she's actually a, a really good actress. Um, another well, another actress I think doesn't, and this is uh, uh, off topic from the entire movie. Another actress that doesn't get enough credit is Ming Na Wen. Like she's yep. she's always been a good actress, but because she, because her most popular roles in America are Street Fighter and other, like, action movies, that's what she gets here. That's why she's always in Star Wars or in Marvel stuff. Or really, like, if you watched her in... Uh, uh, she was in Joy Luck Club, I think, correct? Am I right on that? No, oh, nope, she was. Okay, woo! <laughs> she was a daughter in that. Okay, good. I thought she was in that movie. Okay. But yeah, she doesn't get enough credit either, and, and that that sucks, man. Because there are these are good actresses that really get typecasted easily, and I'm glad that Ming Na Wen and Michelle Yeoh have good careers and can do more or, or or are getting work now. But it just seems like they're doing the same things, and it's a shame because they're actually really capable. I don't know anything else you want to talk about before we get into spoilers. Um, not offhand, I think we covered things for the most part. Okay. Okay, we're getting spoilers for Crazy Rich Asians. If you have not seen the film and are interested in watching it, you can just pause now and come back later. Uh, we'll count down in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero, okay. I'm not going to use this as a criticism, but it's more of an observation. 
I found it weird uh, when they got to Singapore how everyone spoke English except for maybe a few characters just just to remind people that that um, that Rachel was in a foreign country. But I was really it was it was odd at first to watch this movie and everyone was speaking really good English. And I, I wonder if this is because I'm ignorant as to what Singapore is and that a lot of people do speak English there or that because it, this is a Hollywood movie and they want to make as much money as possible, all the characters had to speak English. I mean, what is it? Is it is that common that everyone speaks English there or is that was that weird, too, for you? Um, it's a bit weird for me, especially since um, uh Singapore is quite diverse. Um, yeah. You've got uh, you've got folks from India there. You've got folks from uh, some of the local Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia and stuff that live in Singapore and stuff too. So there are a lot of languages spoken. But at the same time, uh, the one language that is a common language is ultimately English. So, oh, okay. so for me, it was just like, all right, that's a little weird that everyone's just, you know, just rolling with English, but um, it is Singapore, so I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll just kind of uh, relax for a bit. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm going to admit I, I was ignorant on it. So I, I, I and once like I think 15, 20 minutes in, I kind of forgot about it. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But I just thought it was like really strange how okay, there's clearly ancillary characters or like maybe extras that are not speaking English and the and the actors and the characters are speaking I guess it was Cantonese or Chinese. And but all of a sudden these key characters in there who have been living there all their lives are speaking not only perfect English, but beautiful English. Like really well trained english and i and i was really afraid to say this but i was like i was expecting some to have a little bit of broken english or maybe uh, or maybe i don't know maybe not have a firm grasp in the english language as it is today because i was really expecting like maybe kind of a culture clash in that ess- in that essence when it came to rachel and and Nick's family, but be- that didn- when that didn't happen, I was like, that's kind of strange. But again, like it-, it doesn't hurt the film at all. I in 15 minutes, I forgot. But and if it weren't for me taking notes in the middle of the movie, I would have forgotten completely about it. But I just thought that was a little strange. Yeah, and I mean, I could definitely, uh, I could definitely see that. So, but yeah, as I said, that was kind of my thought on on the whole. Um, language of choice for the movie. I was just like, oh, that's interesting that, you know, just they're going with English, but at the same time, it somewhat makes sense because the common language in Singapore is English, okay. which kind of binds everyone together. So, yeah, I get it. I kind of, uh, I can kind of see it. Hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, we went into it in the review. I mean, <laughs> these characters are one dimensional, and this happens, this happens a lot in ensemble movies. But usually good ensemble movies are like three hours long. I think of like Magnolia. Um, but I know that couldn't fly in this. So, but um, but the, the character, the, the, the hmm, excuse me, the movie is so charming that it kind of just doesn't matter. It's just, it's a fun movie. So, yeah, they're playing into stereotypes. Like, like we, we talked about the... The attractive but not really attractive lead character. The really handsome but really likable guy that's non-threatening. We have the asshole who is a womanizer. We have the the film director who is sleeping with a tramp, essentially. You know, really broad characterizations that in a movie that isn't this charming would just fail this movie big time. But because the actor's play into it and have fun with it it works in the movie um i mean i i mentioned aquafina in the movie i think she was a standout she was good in this um really what what is there to talk about in plot that's really not that i mean was something in the plot that kind of 
grab your attention that you want to talk about? Well, for me, um, just uh, uh, the one performance that I loved um, was Gemma Chan. And okay. unfortunately, her character just gets really hurt really badly by just um, her douchebag husband just just um, sleeping around with her because he's got his um, male insecurity issues with not being the breadwinner of the family. And of course, uh, just it kind of stinks because just... Um, she's she's just really kind, really loving, and just yeah. all out just as would do anything to take care of her family, and this guy just kind of throws that right all in the garbage, and it's just like, dude, just what the shit? That, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I also felt they what they did with that was kind of weird. I mean, the, the film, the, the, the theme of the film is basically fish out of water, and this, the main character is having to contend with being a quote unquote commoner in a in a very privileged rich world, and the fact that they had that dynamic with that couple, uh, with Gemma Chan's character and her husband, uh, was it kind of felt like a preview of what could happen between the main characters. But when they went the route of, oh, by the way, he's cheating on her, uh, I was like, ooh, ooh, really? Ooh. Because uh. <laughs> I was thinking, like, this was going to be the, like, with that character specifically, I thought it was going to be that character is going to get, uh, uh, is going to have a sort of relationship with Rachel and help her understand exactly what she is going to go through if she marries if she met, if she gets attached to Nick and marries him, yeah, I thought that was the route they were going. But when they went the route of oh, he's also all not only is he pretty much treated like trash from the family, he's also cheating on his wife. It's kind of like oh, so you're basically saying that her his family her family was right to treat him like trash. That's weird. <laughs> it's like okay, yeah. And I kind of came to the same thing. I was just like you know just. Um, in the beginning, they they talk a lot how Astrid and Nick are just very very close, yeah. and I was just like, okay, so we got a best friend dynamic going. Okay, got it, got it. And then of course, just Rachel mentions that you know, just of all the family members that she remembers most, Astrid is the one that she remembers, and it's just like, okay, so there's an establishment of this you know best friend sort of relationship. Okay, great. And so um maybe maybe astrid you know kind of helps her with this whole hey um i know you're getting into um uh, getting into this relationship with nick but um here's how you kind of play the game with with our family and everything and i thought that they were going to really elaborate into that and then of course the the whole oh by the way her husband's cheating on her sort of just came out of the blue it was just like okay well that's kind of strange to suddenly shoehorn in but yeah whatever <laughs> i mean this is based off of a book which basically turned into a series after it got popular so there and with this movie making the amount of box office it did the sequel is coming of course so i i, I guess what they will do in multiple and in, in next movies are they're gonna build up that character pretty much but yeah it, it just i for someone who is so close to her brother they have very little scenes in this movie together, like very little. I think I think there's, I'm thinking it's like one or two scenes really to, that shows that close bond. And Gemma Chan plays the the character pretty well. She's intimidating looking, but she plays that heart of gold character pretty well. So I like it was it was it was a good performance. Like it, it was good. I, I would say. I, I'm puzzled by some people who just outright hate this movie because uh, unless you just hate fun in movies, which uh, there are some people who are like that, I know. Like, th everything has to be an artistic expression and has to show the deep meanings and human tragedies of of living. I know. Th I used to be one of them. But this is a fun movie. Like, th 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 they're, all the actors are charismatic. I, I can't think of one actor I would think of this this is an annoying piece of shit and I want him off the screen. I I, <laughs> I enjoyed them. Like I 
I didn't find one character in this movie to be un okay, except the ones that were meant to be unlikable. I didn't find one where I was like, get this person off the screen. They shouldn't be here. <laughs> it was like I I actively in I I had fun watching the movie. So I I don't get I I just don't get the hate of, of the movie really. Um but it's a stereotypical romantic comedy. That's that's what it is. So if you're expecting bigger than like if you're expecting bigger than that, then that's kind of your fault. But yeah, I, I don't I I liked it. I I thought it was fun for what it is. The visual presentation, like the the sets, the set design, the clothing, like God, like it, it stood out so well in this and it was just beautiful to look at in, in this. So I and I guess with the setting being really rich people in a foreign land in, in Singapore, I guess it makes sense. But I, I still was kind of sh I was kind of surprised how I enjoyed the visual presentation of the movie. Yeah. And uh, on top of uh, the visual presentation piece, uh, there was also something that I thought was real interesting. The music selection. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, you had, uh, you had some, like, like, um, some old fashioned I guess you could call it, um, uh, uh, Chinese pop songs that, that were played, but then it got to some really interesting songs that were being played. Like, um, a lot of them were, uh, Chinese language covers of just really big, um, uh, Western pop songs, which I yeah. thought was just outright interesting. I was like, wow, that's really neat. You know, just not really the biggest pop music uh, fan, but mm -hmm. you know, just sort of hearing these um, Chinese language uh, covers of some of these big pop songs was really interesting to hear, especially considering that um, I have some comprehension in Mandarin and Cantonese. Hmm. I mean, I thought that was interesting too, and that's a, a, a creative decision that could have blown up in, in their face in this. Because uh, some people would like reckon, oh, that's money. <laughs> that's that. That's money. That's what I want. I know that song, and they would say that's, f and and you would run the risk of being, that's fucking corny. <laughs> like why, why are you doing that? But it actually fit the film pretty well. Like it. It wasn't like here's popular film of the day, but in Chinese. If it was that, it would be like that's weird. But it actually fit the movie pretty well. So, even though I, I don't I don't speak Chinese, but even but I recognized the tunes instantly because like I was into like old music and pop and stuff. So once I recognized, like, oh, that's cool. Okay, that fits. <laughs> that's cool. So yeah, I I thought the final song they used was um, interesting, <laughs> to say the least. You know the you know the final song they used. Uh, yellow? Yes. Um, I thought it was... At first, I was like, that doesn't really fit. Ye yellow? Really? Okay. I guess that's a that's a, that, that's a creative take. And then I read up on it as to why the director chose yellow. And he basically said he wanted to take back the epithet. Ah, interesting. So I was like... First off, I was like, oh, right. <laughs> I was like... Because I don't use racial epithets, I didn't really think about that for a second. Like, huh. Okay. Did, but did that work? <laughs> like, I'm I'm thinking about this. Like, that, that's a weird take. And to use that for that reason is kind of like, I don't know if that really works or not the way you're saying I mean, does that make sense to you in, in the in the context of the scene? Because the scene that they 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 put that song in was a a slow cover scene, a slow cover of that song when the couple finally decides to get married. Like that's what happens. But yeah, um, hearing hearing that that was the motivation to use yellow, I'm just kind of like, well, that's a awful weird way to kind of throw it in. <laughs> Yeah, and, and apparently Coldplay had some issues with that song because uh, because of the, I guess, uh, groups were saying it was a racist song because, which I don't get. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the song, but from what I recall of it, they were making fun of Chinese people, so I, I didn't get that. 
but they were not willing to put that song in the movie. And it took the director to say, no, this is why I'm doing this. And they said, okay, <laughs> then go ahead. It's fine. But yeah, I was like, uh, for like the most part, I like the music. Like the trappings, the, the visual and audio trappings of the movie work really well in its favor, except for that. That way I was like, that's weird. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> why is this here? <laughs> so, eh, okay, not a big deal. I just was like, as, but I'm glad you mentioned the music because that was the one thing I was trying to pick up. I was trying to remember and I forgot because I, I, I was like really impressed and liked the covers in this. Because usually when you have covers, it means that oh, we can't afford to actually have the artists. So we have to do this. And that usually lessens the, the quality of the film to some people when they don't actually hear the actual singers singing the actual songs. But again, it worked in this movie. So I, I don't know about you, but I thought it worked. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part, it worked. Um, as some of the kind of um, old school uh, pop songs were uh, oh. kind of interesting to hear. Um, uh, um, especially the one that has, uh, that has almost center focus um, uh, in the movie. Um, uh Wo yo ni dai, which means um, I need all of your love. That's hmm. a really, really freaking old school uh, a ch- a Mandarin Chinese pop song. Hmm. So uh, for me, just hearing that one, I was like, whoa, holy shit. They really kind of dug old school into this one. There was a, a concerted push in this for this movie to be made. So I'm, I'm not surprised that I guess popular music from that from that region got there anything else i'm glad you mentioned the music because i if i forgot about that and then we got out of here i'm like fuck i forgot about the music <laughs> <laughs> i would have been so pissed but yeah anything else uh no i think we can probably go ahead and move to closing thoughts okay go to your closing thoughts then so um overall just um while this uh this movie is definitely not in my preferred genre um i would still recommend people to see it even if uh even if it's uh it's not sort of in their wheelhouse as far as um preference in uh, movie genres mostly because it's just an absolutely fun movie hmm. uh there's a bit of drama in it uh, as expected in a, um, a romance film but you know just it, it is what it is um does it come off as kind of one-dimensional yeah but i mean it's like you said it's it kind of harkens back to sort of classical Hollywood romance movies, just with um, uh, how most of the cast is pretty likable. The despicable characters are pretty despicable, and and just everything is sort of um, wrapped nicely on top of the bow and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just uh, even even though it's definitely not in my preferred genre, just I still thought it was a really fun movie, and I would still recommend people to give it a chance even if romance isn't their preferred genre i'm different in the, in the way because romance dramas were were always a big deal for me i always loved watching romance movies and drama and romance comedies um jane austen movies and books are some of my favorites so i have always had a i've always had a soft spot for romance movies this is a it's a good movie it's not deep it's not it is a. It really is a stereotypical Hollywood movie. So if you're, if you're watching this, seeing all this Asian iconography and all these visuals and seeing all this Asian, like all these Asian actors saying, oh, clearly it's not for me because there's no white people in it or black people in it. No, it's a fun movie, and I, I really, I had fun with it. Um, but that. Uh, the performances are good. The set design is, is exquisite. It's beautiful to watch. Um, just, you know, I, if, if you want to have fun watching a movie with, like, a, a, a significant other or a partner, I mean, this is not a bad movie to watch. It's it's a lot of fun. And, it's, and even when the movie gets into some, like, deep stuff, they kind of just, like, pass it off, really. Like, ah, uh, yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> so... It's a fun movie. I enjoyed it for what it is. It's it's fun. So I, I'd say if you are the slightest bit interested in romance, yeah, give it a shot if you haven't already. But odds are you probably have. So we're, we're late on this. So let's 
go from there. So, yeah, I'd recommend it. All right, Zero, before we get to what we're watching next week, I got a question for you. All right. So, I'm going to post a link on our Discord. It's a trailer. I will edit the time out for time, so you can get your opinion in. You can watch it and tell me what you think of this. Uh, go ahead and watch it, and I will describe what we are talking about. Uh, Rob Zombie has a new movie coming out in September. It's the movie. It's the movie adaptation of The Monsters. And uh, for those of you who, I guess, think who are into films may not know who Rob Zombie is. Well, you probably do by now. He is a, I believe he's a metal singer or a heavy metal singer who also became a film director for movies like House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, uh, and the Halloween movies now. Uh, he's fairly well known now as a director. I mean, as respected in a certain sense. So, and this apparently was a passion project of his that he wanted to do. So, uh, and Zero is watching the trailer now, hopefully, and he will give us his thoughts. Wow, that is interesting. Okay. Looks like a modern day take of it. <laughs> okay. So, what did you think? Um, I think it's interesting that um, it looks like it's a... Um, I guess you can call it a current day adaptation of of uh, the monsters and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and at least from the trailer description, it seems that uh, it'll be sort of uh, the origins of um, Herman and Lily's um, initial courtship and everything as mm -hmm. they travel from Transylvania to Hollywood. Yeah. Um. I didn't know what to think of it when I watched it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this, and I'm like, "Are is he purposely making this shitty? <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> but, like, it kind of works. Like, um, it, it reminds me of the campiness of the original series. So, I'm yeah. like, I, I, I get that. But Yeah, it's... it looks like he was definitely playing real heavy into the campiness of like, it. Because, yeah, I remember the old TV show. It was just camp dripping out of it oh yeah like i got some serious ed wood vibes out of this i was like jesus and i really i started thinking about it. i was like he might be doing this on purpose so i, I don't i don't know like I, like literally i've i watched it last night and still this morning i still don't know what to think of this because i'm like i want to say i fucking hate this this is awful but then again, I'm like, but wait a minute. Like, John Waters does a really good job with camp stuff. So this could work. And if he's that married to the material, it could work in its in a way. So maybe? Like, I'm, I, I went from being, like, kind of disgusted to I'm kind of curious if this is going to be a... If this is going to be an interesting camp take or is this going to be a pipe bomb? So, yeah, like can't believe i'm gonna say this i might watch a rob zombie movie and this might be it but uh <laughs> yeah i just i i just had i had a question beforehand before this but i saw this i'm like nah i gotta expose this to zero <laughs> like I, I gotta show him this all right so yep uh if you haven't seen the trailer for the monsters you can look that up on youtube it's pretty easy to find uh look up the monsters rob zombie trailer so anyway well zero that does it before we go we have to talk about what movie we're watching next i gave you a choice of four movies uh four romance movies of course because we're doing romance for these two weeks and why don't you and uh, you know what i'll tell them what you chose because it was supposed to be my choice and i just passed it off to you uh i gave you four choices and the one you chose is 1999's uh, Roger Michelle film Notting Hill, starring Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts. Um, this is a... I, I will be out in Front Street right now. This is one of my all-time favorite romance movies, so I'm really looking forward to watching it again, and I'm looking forward to watching and having you watch it, because especially when I had a friend... When my friend... Uh, when I told my friends when it came out that this was a great movie... 
they kind of looked at me like, are you retarded? <laughs> like, are, are you serious now? This is a Hugh Grant movie. What are you talking about? So, yeah, I can't wait for you to watch this because this is, I think, is one of the best romance movies out there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So no pressure. You better like it. <laughs> well, I mean, um, it's funny because um, I remember you had mentioned uh, some people uh, really um, put Love Actually much higher than um, Notting Hill. They so, do. Um, and it was kind of funny when you mentioned that because uh, I actually watched uh, Love Actually with an ex-girlfriend of mine, and I thought it was a fun movie and everything. Mm. So just... To see to see that this is uh, more uh, more considered the gold standard, this will be interesting to watch. I, I think Love Actually is the more popular movie, really nowadays. Yeah. Um, Notting Hill made more money, but the writer of Notting Hill went to direct Love Actually. But um, yeah, we okay. Real quick on Love Actually, I didn't like Love Actually that much, and mainly because I, I just thought that the the romance, all the romance sequences in the movie were kind of like, it would be better if you just chose one or two and just went with it than to do eight, nine, or ten and have no impact at all. So I, I, and I can't watch some people like the movie, but I, I just, it, I didn't like it too much. So, yeah, that's me. Okay, so... All right, Zero, that is it for this episode of the Capital Games Movie Club. Tune in next week where we discuss the romantic comedy from 1999, Notting Hill, starring Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts. I am The Wiz. And I'm Zero. And we'll talk to you next week.